Good morning, church. Welcome. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. I hope your heart is set and ready to hear from the word. Lift your hearts in praise. Happy Father's Day, fathers. If you're at home with pancakes in bed, good for you, Dad. Uh, we welcome you at home. <sighs> love this place. Love to be here. Let's go to the word. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while men say to me all day long, where, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go with the multitude, leading the procession to the house of God, with shouts of joy and thanksgiving among the festive throng. Why are you downcast? O oh, my soul, why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior. Let's pray. Father God, I lift up the people sitting in these pews, those coming in now, driving here, those sitting at home, Lord God, that you would touch each person, Lord. Bless them with your spirit, Lord God. Lift our Lift our hearts and our minds towards you. May we push aside anything that would hinder that. We love you, Lord. May this time be set aside for you, to praise you, to honor you. Thank you, Father God, for this place for providing for this place. Touch each part of this service, Lord God, from the worship and song to the prayers to the word. May it all go to honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, everyone. I invite you to stand and join the team as we sing a song based on John 3.16. Be nice if I hit the right preset. There we go.
my own son I just I couldn't do it if you're a dad I'm sure you agree it's just an amazing thing praise God praise God from whom all blessings flow
we lift up your name yes i'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm louder and louder you're gonna hear my praises roar death is supply every need according to your riches and glory you will supply all of our needs we need not fear anything nothing we need fear nothing thank you Lord you may be seated or remain standing or stand on your head I mean you know, whatever makes you comfortable. This is a wonderful family. And you know, we care for each other. And part of that care we show when we invite you on a Sunday morning to come down to these altars and share your needs with us so that we can lift them up to the Lord. You don't have to be a member of the church. We would love the opportunity to pray for you, your specific needs, whatever they may be. So I'm going to invite you now to come on down to the altar. Bring your needs with you.
the darkness flee. I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery. I raise a hallelujah. Fear you've lost your hold. You're going to hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise. Death is defeated. The king is We'd like to welcome you who are joining us online this morning and ask that you would pray with us. Heavenly Father, truly, there is no one like you. You created the heavens and the earth. You created our galaxy and the millions of other galaxies, and you declared them good. You created life on this earth, including men and women, and you declared them good. You created a perfect environment to support and sustain your creation, and it was good. But we know that sin entered the world through the first couple's adherence to a voice that was not yours. And because of that, all that was good is now flawed by the rebellion of our first parents, a rebellion that continues to be inherited by each and every generation since then. And we recognize that all of us here in 2022 are susceptible to that inheritance and to listening to that same voice, which is not yours. We humbly ask your forgiveness for the things we have done which are not according to your will. Forgive us this morning for not always listening to you and forgive us for any unkindnesses that we may have shown to one another or even to any strangers. Forgive us if we have demonstrated any bias towards those whom we simply don't understand. Forgive us for the many times when we have not recognized the voice of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Help us, Lord, to clean up our act. Fill us again with your Holy Spirit so that we may be Christ's ambassadors in this troubled world. For the sick among us or online or others who have been made known to us, we ask you to heal them. Heal them of any disease, of any infirmity, for nothing is impossible with you. No sickness, no physical ailment, no mental confusion is too difficult for you to heal and restore. And we ask your spirit to release his healing power among us to those you bring into our thoughts just now as well. For those that are facing financial problems, we pray that you would provide for their needs. 
for all of us here at FDC, I pray that we would be open to your spirit as he helps us to understand that through our continued and increased generosity and giving, we can be a beacon of hope to those in our own community who find it hard to survive in these times. And may many come to find Jesus Christ through our benevolences and ministries. And so, Lord, open the door of our hearts and open the doors of this church so that our concern and your love will shine forth to make a difference in the lives of the people who need you and provision for their daily needs. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. Hear our prayers, O Lord. All of these things we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Would you join with me in saying our Apostles' Creed? Yes. You're well trained. <laughs> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to the dead. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And from there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, in Christ's universal church, the communion of all believers, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Turn to someone and tell him you're glad to see him this morning. No, because you're a girl and you're a boy. That's right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Action. What is your dad like? He's funny. He's really funny. He's really funny. How is he funny? His dad jokes. You like his dad jokes? No. What are some funny things that your dad does? He claps really hard and, it, and mom doesn't like it. He claps really loud. Yeah, like this. Wow. Wow. What is your dad good at? Working. He's really good at fixing things and building things. He usually goes to the fast food place to get his breakfast. What do you normally eat? Uh, biscuits and waffles. It's a lot of carbs. Is there stuff that he's not very good at? He's not very good at wrestling, I guess. Three? Against one. Yeah. He's not that good at hair. Um, I, don't, I don't know. Oh, I thought you were about to sing. Was that a song you were singing? Um, no. Oh. What's well, something he's done? You're like, Dad is not very good at that. Jokes. Jokes. <laughs> is your dad a pretty strong, dude? Yeah, because he always goes to CrossFit every day. So he's a CrossFit dad. It's like, explore, rah! To do that. Uh, do an impersonation of your dad. I'm just gonna rest my eyes. <laughs> is there anything that your dad has taught you? Nope. What is it? What does he teach you? Sight words. Sight words. I copy him to do what he does. And yeah, you copy him. I just do stuff to make myself 
learn from him. What's your favorite thing to do with your dad? Snuggle and talk with stuffed animals. Go fishing. Play wrestle with me. When you get on his back, you like yank us off of him. How does your dad make you feel? Special? Happy. He makes me hungry from his delicious food. He makes sure we're safe. He makes me happy. Yeah, that's what he makes me feel like. Good job, bro. So if all you dads managed to keep your eye, if you weren't resting your eyes during that, happy Father's Day. We're glad you're here. Thank you for joining us online as well. Um, a few announcements. If you're new here, there's connection cards in the row in front of you in a little pocket. We'd love to hear from you. If you um, just want to let us know you're here, if you have prayer requests or other things you might need, um, we would love to hear that. So if you can fill that out and put it in the bag at the end of your row, that would be wonderful. Um, also, our VBS table, I just cleared it off. So thank you for all your donations coming in. Um, I'm, we're still waiting for some, so thank you for all of you who have taken things off that backboard. Um, Chris Lansky came in this morning with a metal bucket and a hatchet. I said, you look a little crazy. <laughs> but that's what we do at VBS. We look a little crazy sometimes. So she was donating that to us. So we are looking forward to a lot of fun. We have a crew leaders meeting this Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. So if you have signed up to be a crew leader, I will look forward to seeing you there. Our t-shirts are ready. So um, lots of fun stuff. And we will see you Tuesday night if you're ready to volunteer. Also, Wednesday night, Bible study will continue, so the cafe is going to get a lot of use this week. Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, Pastor Jason will be there ready to greet you. Um, coffee will be on, and our Bibles will be open, so please join them on Wednesday night for Bible study. Also this week, Sister Strong, also in the cafe, I'm telling you. Big week for the cafe. So Sister Strong is meeting this Friday night, um, also at 7 o'clock. If you've not been a part of that group before, you are always welcome. Um, come meet some ladies. Um, see what we do. You are very warmly welcome. Um, and for all of us old timers, we hope to see you there as well. And Juanita, on our Facebook page, she'll be reminding us what chapters we should have read for all of us who maybe wait till the last minute to read our chapters. Um, Juanita will remind us. And thank you again. Our food pantry has been seeing some new faces. Certainly um, regulars have been coming through as well. We meet a great need every Thursday. Um, people call the office very often looking um, to see when our hours are, when our food pantry is, um, and you help to meet that need. So I know sometimes if you're on our Facebook group, Pastor Jerry posts pictures of the huge amounts of food that we have there and we're so grateful to be able to meet that need in our community um so you can thank pat and her team um who are who are up there yeah you can thank them right now <laughs> um it's a lot of work they faithfully serve and are meeting a, a real need in our community so thank you as you give um as you pray for our congregation um as you think of the ministries of the church that's one of the things we can be very thankful for um and if you're interested in that ministry or would like to know what other needs they might have, you can certainly see Pat, um, and she'd be happy to let you know how to serve them. But thank you for continuing to give. Um, there are always ways to give online. You can um, give in person here. There are boxes on the welcome tables, and we um, pray that we are good stewards of those things that you entrust to us. So as we're thinking of being thankful, um, let's continue to praise God and worship, and let's stand together. I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. Then you came along and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, yes, nothing. 
us out Light in this broken land Full authority Every victory Yours All authority Every victory Is yours testimony about this song when we sing songs they come alive they come alive in our hearts and in our lives and when we hear songs when I hear songs I hear a song and it stays with me and it attaches itself to memories and this song was very popular when my mother passed away 10 years ago she passed away from cancer and as I was next to her bed I kept hearing this song he will overcome. He has overcome. We will overcome. And I grasped hold of that song. It was in my car. It was near me when I held her hand at her deathbed. And I sang it over and over and over. And it became an anthem to me. And I pray as we sing songs in church that you grab hold of them and they become an anthem to you. They become alive. A lot of times they're written about God's word. And if you have a song, sometime in the middle of the night, when you're in your car, when you're discouraged, a song will minister to you. And I just pray that these songs minister to you as we worship. Savior, worthy of honor and glory, worthy of all.
be seated. Good morning. My name is Jason. I'm the pastor here at FTC. If you're, if you're new here, uh, it's great to have you with us. Thank you for spending a little bit of your time with us. Children are dismissed to Children's Church. Everybody's excited. It's quiet in here right now. I guess I need to tell some dad jokes. No. No is the response there. Uh, that was an eye, for those of you who didn't see that, that was an eye roll from my wife. But uh, if you're joining us online, good morning. Thank you so much for being here. I want to make, take a second to make sure I acknowledge all the fathers who are here today. Happy Father's Day. Uh, if you're here today, happy Father's Day. If you're watching online, happy Father's Day. Thank you so much for spending some of your uh, day with us. And really that for everyone. Uh, it's been just such a, a, an honor. It's been, been a privilege. It's been exciting to see uh, more and more people coming to church on Sunday mornings. And so I uh, want to thank you for doing that. encourage you to keep, keep doing that. And we'll continue to keep doing uh, church as best we can. We've been in the middle of a series. We're, we are in the middle of a series on the Holy Spirit. Um, and so uh, that's what we're going to continue to do today, uh, as, as you even may have seen in that video. But I don't know what your father, for those of you who are fathers, I don't know what your plans are today. Some of you will probably go out to lunch. Some of you will do a barbecue. I will watch golf. That's not a dad joke. That's really what's going to happen in my house today. I will be sitting in front of the TV, and I will watch the U.S. Open because that's one of the things I like to do on Father's Day. Some of you are like, you like to watch golf? Like it's bad. Some of you are even saying it's bad enough to play golf, but to watch golf is really bad. I will watch golf today, and Joy won't. She does not enjoy it, as hard as it is to believe. She doesn't enjoy uh, watching that with me, so it'll be like a solo thing for me. Joy and I have different tastes in what we like to watch. Uh, she likes uh, true crime. She watches every Dateline that's ever been made. She also likes old movies. Uh, it's one of her life goals. She has a bucket list of goals. One of her bucket lists of goals is that all three of the boys would watch the unsinkable Molly Brown with her. She loves that movie. I, and I want to be careful here, don't want to offend anyone, have different feelings. I very much do not like that movie. I like comedy. I like science fiction. I like sports. Uh, if you, sometimes if, you're, if you come to our house at just the right moment, you might get to hear Joy offering a soliloquy on the importance of that movie to the boys, of why they should watch it. She has not been successful. Um, in doing that. Most of the time, Joy, uh, like I said, Joy and I have different tastes in, in entertainment, and so we are pretty intentional about finding things that we like together. And one of the things that we will watch together is a show called Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. I'm sure you, this is, I'm not, real, uh, this is a show many of you have watched. It just finds local restaurants around the country, and, uh, and, and we like watching about the food. I really like watching about the food. 
And so we'll watch that show, and we will find, we will try to like go places. And recently, we were in Philly. We went to Philly for a weekend. I, we were, uh, I was doing a wedding, and we were down there for the weekend. And we happened to watch that week an episode where they were taping in Philly, and it was about a barbecue joint. And became one of the goals of the weekend to go to that barbecue joint. And then we found out that it had burned down, and we didn't get to go. But when we watch it, we have to be careful about when we watch that show and food shows, and you've probably experienced this, because when you watch food shows, what happens? You get hungry. And when you watch Dinah's Drivers and Dives, you're like, I want that food. And so we have to be careful about when we, do, we, we watch those things. But actually, I, I tell that story for a reason. As I've been studying and researching and doing the homework to prepare to talk about the Holy Spirit uh, during, the, the, during this series, I have gotten increasingly excited and, uh, and hopeful about experiencing the power of the Holy Spirit in our church. I'm like, it's, it's as if I'm watching one of those shows and I want to go eat at one of those restaurants. As I talk, as I read about, as I study, as I look into the Holy Spirit and I prepare these messages and do the homework, I am increasingly, I have this heightened expectation that the Holy Spirit wants to do something in our church. And so I hope you're experiencing that too. That's really the point of this whole thing. It's not a data dump, as I've said. This is about us learning about the Holy Spirit, who the Holy Spirit is, what the Holy Spirit does, and then asking the Holy Spirit to, become, to come and do those things that he does in our lives. The theme verse that we've been talking about through this series is, is found in Acts 1.8. It says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. I am increasingly aware of this innermost desire for the Holy Spirit to do things in my life. And that hasn't always been who I am. I grew up in uh, an Assemblies of God church. We're a Pentecostal church. We believe that the power and work of the Holy Spirit is not just happened in biblical times, but it's for today. But there, there have been times in my life where I've been, maybe I've, I've heard something or I've seen something that just didn't line up. And so I've become... I've become, there have been times where I'm skeptical about this, and so I, I'm much more concrete with understanding the Scripture than I am with the Holy Spirit. And the more I've studied about the Holy Spirit, the more I see that it lines up with exactly what Scripture is talking about. The, whole, the Bible talks a ton about the Holy Spirit. And so today we're going to work through uh, what the Bible talks about. We're going to talk, work through what the role of the Holy Spirit is, what the Holy Spirit does. But before I do that, I do want to go back to last week and clarify something that I said because this has been weighing on me all week. Last Sunday, I was teaching about how the Holy Spirit brings order to chaos. We see that right in the beginning of Scripture. And I said, if you're experiencing chaos in your life, sometimes our, 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 our experience when we're seeing all this chaos, when we experience all the chaos, is we try to fix all of the problems. And I said, instead of that, we need to invite the Holy Spirit into those situations. And I, that's very true. But I, I do think that I, I may not have been clear. I wondered all week if I came off as saying that focusing on inviting the Holy Spirit will make our problems go away or that they should be ignored or that they don't exist anymore. When we are involved in these chaotic situations, we want to invite the Holy Spirit in for a couple of reasons. One, because the Holy Spirit will be with us as we go through the trials and struggles of life. Inviting the Holy Spirit into the situations of your life doesn't mean that your problems go away. But boy, would that be easy to preach. But that's not what we experience in the practical. Sometimes God's supernatural power heals. Sometimes God's supernatural power makes things miraculously go away or miraculously appear. But most of the time when we invite God's Spirit into our lives, when we invite God's, the Holy Spirit into the situations, he does bring order to chaos, but he's with us in the trials. 
And the second thing is the Holy Spirit gives us insight, gives us better uh, discernment and wisdom on how to deal with our issues. And so I don't want to come off as saying, don't worry about your pro. well, don't worry about your problems. But forget your problems. They don't exist. They're not real. That's not realistic. We go through difficult times. We go through trials. We go through certain circumstances. And being a Christian, inviting the Holy Spirit in, doesn't mean that we won't experience those things. There's going to be tough times. We invite the Holy Spirit because he strengthens us through those tough times. When I, uh, we were having dinner with, with someone in the church on Thursday night, and uh, it, actually, I'll tell you, it was Pastor Jerry. We were having we had Pastor Jerry over on Thursday night, and he was talking about some of uh, his life experience in ministry. And Joy said, "How did you do that?" And he said, "You just do it. God gives you the strength to do it in the middle of the moment." And that's why we, are, we have to be so intentional about making sure we're inviting the Holy Spirit in because it's a sustaining power that helps us through things. And so that, um, but he gives us wisdom. He helps us deal with issues. John 16, 13, uh, Jesus is quoted as saying, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. The Holy Spirit serves as a guide for us, as a, as a, direct, a directive, as a person who directs us into wisdom and discernment. And so we can deal with our issues better because the Holy Spirit is guiding us. And so that leads us into today's topic. Today I want to talk about the role of the Holy Spirit. What exactly do the Holy, does the Holy Spirit do, and where do we find that? And so I'm going to break this down. This is going to be like a two-parter, both today, I think. The first half or two-thirds of our message is going to be very, a lot of Scripture, and it's going to be the theory of this, Okay? And then the second half, the second third, or the last part of our time together will, will be very experiential. So we'll talk about how this works in Scripture and how I've experienced this in life. Okay? Um, John 14 through 16 is the place in the Bible we find the most information about the, the subject of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is preparing uh, to, to leave the earth, leave his disciples, and, and so in those three chapters, he gives a ton of insight about wh- who the Holy Spirit is and how, who the Holy Spirit's coming, because his disciples have anxiety that Jesus is leaving them, and they're going to be left alone. And Jesus says, you're not going to be left alone. The Spirit is coming, and let me tell you about the Spirit. And what you find in, ver- in chapters 14 through 16 is a ton of information, a ton of stuff that you can take confidence in and know who, who the Holy Spirit is and what the Holy Spirit's doing. And that's important to us. Because that's how we learn to trust what the Holy Spirit's doing in our lives. And so I'm not going to read three chapters of the Bible because it will take a long time. But out of those three chapters, I'm going to read some excerpts of Scripture where Jesus talks about what the Holy Spirit will do. And so we're going to start in chapter 14. If you, uh, this is, um, this is verses 15 through 17. If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you to be with you forever. The Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because uh, it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. Okay, so verse 26. Now we'll jump to verse 26. But the advocate, by the way, that's a word that you'll keep seeing. Jesus says, I'm, uh, I'm going to ask the Father to send another advocate, another person to be with you. Jesus was the first one, and he's leaving, and so one just like him is coming. And that's the word Jesus uses, uses continually, his advocate. When the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you must also testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. Okay? Uh, I skipped a bunch of words. Let's go back. Let me read it right. John 14, 26. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will mind you of everything I have said. Now, John 15, 26. When the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father will testify about me. And you must also testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. Now we'll, verse, we'll jump to chapter 16. 
I'll pull, I'll pull all this together in just a second. But I want you to hear these texts. But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove to the world, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin because people do not believe in me. About righteousness because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer. About judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. Verse 12, I have much more to say to you, but more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will only speak what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine, and that is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. John's discourse about the Holy Spirit teaches a number of things about the Holy Spirit. And when we dive into the text, we're able to dispel a bunch of the misunderstandings. There's 10 different things in that three chapter discourse that Jesus talks about with the Holy Spirit. 10 things he says he'll do. And I'm gonna break them into categories for you, for us this morning. The first thing, as our advocate, the Holy Spirit inspires us. In chapter 14, verse 17, we read that verse. Jesus says, the Spirit will be with, will be, uh, will be with you and will be in you. The Spirit is with us, inspiring us, challenging us, churning inside of us, directing us to inspire us to live out the things that Jesus taught us. In uh, chapter 14, 26, it says, the Spirit will remind you of my teaching. The Holy Spirit brings things in recollection to us. It reminds us of things so that we can tie it together. Going back to Acts chapter 2, which we talked about a couple weeks ago. The Holy Spirit comes. The, the day of Pentecost happens. And Peter's trying to explain what's going on. And what does he do? He uses scripture to explain it. He didn't prepare that message ahead of time. In the moment, Peter gives this whole sermon, which by the way, it takes me hours to prepare. Peter did like 10 minutes, but I'm not jealous. He gives his whole sermon explaining what the scriptures, how it prepared us for that moment. And he did that because the inspiration of the Holy Spirit reminds us of the things we've learned. Why is it important to read scripture, to be studying scripture? Sometimes you're going to open your Bible and you're going to read the words and it feels like there's nothing there. And you're like, oh, this is tedious, torturous. What you're doing is you're, pre even in those moments when you do your devotions, you don't feel like anything's there. You're, you're preparing for God to use, the Holy Spirit to use that at a later time to inspire you to something. So sometimes we do our devotions and we're like, wow, I got a lot out of that. And sometimes we're like, I don't understand a thing I read. Don't stop doing it. Because the Spirit's going to use that to remind us of things. Something's going to happen in your day, and it's going to remind you of what happened when you were reading. Oh, I get it now. The, the Spirit inspires us as our advocate. As our advocate, the Spirit reveals things to us. If we go back to 1426, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I said to you. The Holy Spirit reveals truth to us. Oh, repeatedly in that passage, Jesus says, when the spirit of truth comes, the Holy Spirit reveals truth to us, reveals things to us. Uh, the Holy Spirit testifies about Jesus. In 1526, it says that. In 1613, it says the Holy Spirit guides us into all truth. We see truth repeatedly happening here. The 
Sometimes, I said this last week, I'll say it again. Our feelings and the truth are at odds. And our feelings can be dominant in telling us what we think we should be feeling and believing. And our feelings can tell, be dominant in getting us to believe what we think is happening is actually happening. And our feelings are, are sometimes at odds with the Spirit. But the Spirit is the one who reveals all truth. Our feelings don't always reveal all truth. Now, I know you all know that in theory, but in the moment, it, it feels very real. And sometimes the things that are actually happening and the things that we perceive are happening are not always right. And the Holy Spirit's job, the Holy Spirit's role is to reveal truth to us. Sometimes we feel like God's not there or God, uh, God doesn't love us. Sometimes we feel like it shouldn't be the way it is. And God's truth, the spirit of truth comes and reveals to us, no, I'll never leave you or forsake you. But God, I feel like you're not there. And so standing on those facts that we know about, the Holy Spirit reminds, of the, as of, uh, reminds us of those. Third thing, the, as our advocate, the Holy Spirit it administers God's gifts. Chapter 16, 13, it's this, the Spirit speaks on, the ha on behalf of Jesus. I love this in John 16, 14. This is one of my, like this has been revelatory for me. The Holy Spirit will only tell us what he hears from Jesus. If you're wondering about what the Holy Spirit's saying to you or leading you to, if it doesn't align with the teachings of Jesus, it's not from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will only teach us what he receives from Jesus. There's a consistency in the way God aligns us and is talking to us. And we can trust that from the scriptures and what the Spirit is saying will be aligned. As our fourth, and I'm, I'm working right through these. As our advocate, the Holy Spirit calls us. John 16, 8 says that he will prove the world to be wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. It's the Holy Spirit that calls us to a new way of living. Even before we come to faith, the Holy Spirit is calling us into a different way. And when we come to faith, the Holy Spirit works inside of us to transform who we are. We become a new creation because the Holy Spirit is changing us on the inside. Things we used to want, we don't want anymore. Things we used to not want, we want now. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. That is not the work of us. Sometimes we try to guilt people into certain behaviors. It's the Holy Spirit's work that transforms our lives. Now, sometimes the Holy Spirit will use us to speak wisdom into people's lives. As your pastor, there are things I'm going to tell you to avoid. Not because I'm trying to guilt you into things, because the wisdom of the Holy Spirit has brought me life lessons that have told me probably, probably safer to avoid certain, certain situations. But it's not my job, it's not our job, it's not your job to guilt somebody into certain behaviors because you think that'll make them a better person. The Holy Spirit works in us to transform us so it's not a behavioral thing. It's not about what we do or we don't do. It's about God transforming who we are so we become a better reflection of who God is. So that when people see you, they see less of you and they see more of God working in you. But fifth, the Holy Spirit emboldens us. 14, 16, he is sent to help us be his witnesses, be witnesses for Jesus. Acts 4.31 says, uh, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. It, it emboldens our testimony. As we read this, the, the book of Acts, as we read this story of the early church, these people have incredible boldness of speaking the truth of Christ, which was, an, which was not a popular message in their day. 
They're being arrested. They're being beaten. They're, being, they're facing all of these things. And they stand totally confident in who God is. Not because they're, they're like more, they're not better than anybody else. Because the Holy Spirit's working inside of them to bring such conviction about the truth that they're experiencing. That they don't care what the, con- the consequences are. And so, in these three chapters, we see Jesus directing the disciples on what they'll experience through their advocate, through the Holy Spirit. Which leads to this question, how does all this happen? Okay, so I I will, maybe you're here and you're like, I will agree that the Holy Spirit inspires. The Holy Spirit uh, um, reveals truth. The Holy Spirit ministers God's gifts. The Holy Spirit calls us. The Holy Spirit emboldens us. That's all great theory. How does it actually happen? It's a great question. And for that, I just want to share with you what my experiences with the Holy Spirit are. The Holy Spirit has a voice. But for me, it's never been an audible one. I've never experienced where like the heavens open up and I hear a voice from heaven, Jason. Why is it, we always picture God with like a deep voice. I've never experienced the heavens open up and Jason, this is what I want you to do. But I can promise you, I've heard the voice of the Holy Spirit. It's not audible, but it's inside a sense. The Holy Spirit is in, Jesus said, Jesus said, we'll be with you, we'll be in you. The Holy Spirit resides in us. And so he speaks to us. And we must come to a place where we learn the voice of the Holy Spirit. And when we do that, we become more confident the next time we hear that voice. And I said to you that the Holy Spirit speaks order into chaos. It doesn't always seem that way in the moment. Uh, February of 2018. I was a campus pastor at a large church, um, and we were experiencing some challenges, is maybe the best way to say it, in, in, in our community, in our church. And we were, Joy and I were also experiencing some challenges in our home. At that point, uh, we had lived in our home for about 10 year, nine or 10 years. And I'm not the best at like maintaining our home. And so there were some maintenance issues that had to happen in our home that I was aware of. I wasn't really doing anything about it, but I could tell you that wall needed to be painted. And I didn't paint it. And so, in, in, in March of 2018, as I was praying, I, I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit say, get your house in order. I heard it when I was praying about our church. And so, but that's what, that was it. Get your house in order. Okay, okay, Holy Spirit, I hear that. Explain it to me. Nothing. Sometimes the, the Holy Spirit always brings order to chaos, but sometimes in the moment, it, it won't make sense to you. It'll seem chaotic. It may seem chaotic because God's got a bigger understanding of the whole picture than we do. And in the moment, we'll hear something from the Holy Spirit. And for those of you that have experienced it, it's, it's an inward voice. Some of you will think of it like a conscience. And those kinds of, it's not your conscience. It's something that aligns up to the truth of Scripture. It can be support. If I see it in Scripture, if it aligns to the teaching of Jesus, remember, the Holy Spirit will only tell us, remind, will only teach us what he hears Jesus leading us to. And so if you're hearing something from inside and you think it might be the Holy Spirit and it doesn't line up with the teachings of Scripture, it's probably not the Spirit. But we should talk about it. But there will be times where you don't understand. But God, the Holy Spirit brings order to chaos. Order is understandable. In the moment, you may not understand it. I did not know what it meant. 
to get my house in order in March of 2018. And so I set about talking with Joy. I set about, I decided, you know what? We're going to do both. We're going to really focus on the challenges we're having as a camp, as a, as a church campus. And we're going to work, and Joy and I are going to work on our house. We went through the rest of that year. We took, we really attacked and we were intentional about the growth challenges we were having at our campus. By the end of the year, uh, we had seen, we were, we were doing better than we'd ever had in the history of the campus, praise God. And we were, we had really started to take, to set about of doing the work to get our house ready. Because we didn't know what this meant. Are you moving us, God? Are you, what, what's happening? I didn't know it at the time, but January of 2019, major change in our lives. And I left that, and, and that, I left that church. I didn't know that was gonna happen. And we went, we, we went about the work of find, we went to a new church and, and continued to work on our house. And then COVID hits. And God starts to stir something in me. Jason, I want you to think about being a pastor. Uh, God, I told people I'd never do that. Yeah. God was fully aware that I had told people that, by the way. And by the time it came to, actually it was a year ago today, it was Father's Day last year that I stood in front of you the first, for the first time as a candidate. By the time it came to sell our house, our house was ready to be sold because two years before that, God said, start working on your house. I didn't know it. God said, start working on, your, on the campus. When we were ready to hand off the campus, it was in its most healthy condition. I didn't know what was all going to happen down the road. I knew this voice inside of me was leading me to something. And it worked. Like God, surprise, God was right. And now, each time I experience that voice, that leading, and I see how it plays out in my life, I trust that voice more. We learn the voice of the Holy Spirit. You hear stories about babies learning the voice of their parents. We're all those babies learning the voice of the Holy Spirit in our lives. There'll be times that don't make sense. In the moment, it will eventually. There'll be times where it feels like more chaos. It will be order eventually. And so as you start to experience it, how do I know if it's the Holy Spirit? Scripture. Godly community around you. Talk to me, talk to Pastor Jerry, talk to one of our elders or our deacons. Hey, I'm feeling like this. Okay. Lean on that. I'm feeling like this. You know, maybe you should keep praying. I, I, I'm not, I don't know. I'm not saying it's not from God, but that, I don't, I don't know. Find godly wisdom. Find, find, find godly leaders who will help you walk through and transition those stuff. And as you experience those things, it'll start small. It'll grow. You learn that voice in the little things and you gain trust and you trust it and you, you experience it again and you trust it and you experience it again. And then, and then the Holy Spirit will tell you something and you'll be like, that's not possible. And you trust it. Holy cow, it happened! Spirit, speak to me. And as you, as you experience it, you want more of it. God, do that again in me. God, talk to me more. It becomes addictive. And we are transformed by the renewing of our mind into the person he created us to be.
That's how the Holy Spirit's worked in my life. It always aligns with scripture and it's something inside of me. If you come to me and you say, J Jason, I was in my backyard yesterday and the heavens opened up and a voice from heaven spoke. I'm not gonna tell you that, that you didn't experience that. I can tell you that I haven't. The way you experience it does not authenticate it. What you experience does. Would you pray with me? Jesus, I invite your Holy Spirit. As, a, as the leader of our church, I invite your Holy Spirit to be present. God, we want to experience the work of your Spirit in our lives individually. We want to experience the work of your, of your Spirit corporately as a church. I am open and, and willing, and I anticipate a powerful move of your Spirit in our church. God, I pray that our lives, each, we would begin to see, have revelation of your truth, that we would learn more about this, we would experience your spirit. In your name we pray, amen. I'm gonna invite the elders to come forward. We're gonna share communion together. Uh, if you were with us last week, Doc led communion and he so beautifully talked about community with God community with Jesus. And when we have, when we take communion, we're inviting Jesus, we're inviting the spirit of Jesus to be present with us. And so that's what we're going to do together. You could stand and come forward and just ask that as you receive, as you take the element, you would go back to the, your chair and we would take them. Uh, we'll receive all the elements together. I'm Holy Spirit, I need you. Come, sweet Spirit, I pray. Come in your strength and your power. Come in your own gentle. First Corinthians 11 says, for what I received from the Lord, I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread. When he'd given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. If you want to take the bread pour, wafer portion of the, of the elements, and let, let's just pray together. Jesus, I thank you for your body that was broken. And I thank you for the scriptures that teach us what's available to us because of your body that was broken. God, I pray that through the power of the Holy Spirit, healing would flow in our church through your power. Amen. Would you take the bread? In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus, I thank you that you're, through your spirit, you bring order to chaos. 
God, we invite, Jesus, we invite you now through your new covenant to bring order in our lives, to bring peace into our life, joy, faith, hope, love. Amen. Would you drink? Would you stand as I offer today's benediction? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Jesus, I pray that that, that, that blessing that we find in, in numbers, that I quote every week, that through your Holy Spirit, it would be made real to us. That your spirit would bless us and keep us. That we would sense your presence and your grace. That we would know you're there and that we would experience your peace. Be honored by everything we say and do. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being here. Have a great day. Happy Father's Day to everyone. We will see you next week. The sound of angels, oh, the sound of angels' song, and all this for a king. We could join and sing, all to Christ the King. How constant, how divine, this song of ours will rise. And how divine the song of ours will rise, will rise. Oh, praise him! Oh, praise him! He is holy, he is holy. Turn your gaze to heaven. sound of salvation come, the sound of rescued ones, and all this for a king. Angels joy to sing, all for Christ the King. How infinite and sweet, this love so rescuing, oh how infinitely sweet. Great love has redeemed.